Aiman, the Prophet's mother figure. Long ago, a little Abyssinian baby named Baraka was born around the year of 557. When she was just a little girl, some people took her to Mecca to sell her as a slave. But a nice rich man named Abdullah and his wife Amina decided to bring Baraka into their home. Baraka was really happy to have a nice family. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings, Abdullah and Amina became pregnant with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet's father Abdullah died, Baraka helped Amina during the hard times even though she was only around 13 years old. When Amina was giving birth, Baraka was the only other person in that room with Amina. So, she was the first person to hold baby Muhammad وسلم, in her arms. When Baraka was around 20 years old, she traveled with the 6-year-old Muhammad وسلم, and his mother and Abdul Muttalib. Unfortunately, when they were coming back, the Prophet's mother, Amina, got very sick. When she realized that she was going to die, Amna whispered to Baraka and asked her if she could stay with little Muhammad وسلم, and be like a mother to him. Baraka loved Muhammad وسلم, very much, so she stayed by Muhammad وسلم's side all the way until he was an adult. And because of that, she was always like a mother figure to Muhammad After Muhammad got married, he and his wife Khadija Radintala helped Baraka get married to Ubaid who lived in Medina. So she moved there to be with her husband. Then Baraka had a baby boy named Ayman Radintala. Because of him, the people started to call Baraka Umm Ayman, which means the mother of Ayman. Sadly, her husband Ubaid died within a few years. So, she came back to Mecca with her son and lived in Khadija Radintala's house with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Umm Ayman had very strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of that, the Quraysh got mad and tortured her. During the early days of Islam, Umm Ayman even risked her life many times to give important messages to the Prophet. The Prophet felt bad for Umm Ayman because, again, she didn't have a husband. So, when the Prophet was with the other Sahabas, he told them that if anyone wants to get married to a woman of paradise, they should marry Umm Ayman. At that moment, the Prophet's adoptive son, Zid, happily married her. Together, they had a baby boy named Usama Radintala, who later was famous for being the 17-year-old army commander. After the Prophet escaped to Medina, Umm Ayman also decided to stay by the Prophet's side and moved to Medina. At that time, she was 65 years old. She walked on foot all the way to Medina. It was a very long and hard journey through the Arabian desert. She struggled with the extreme heat, sandstorms, and was extremely thirsty during her trip. Finally, when she made it to Medina, her feet were swollen and her face was covered in sand and dust. When the Prophet saw her, he said, Oh, my mother, and ran to her and wiped her face and massaged her feet and said that she truly belonged in paradise. Baraka or Umm Ayman continued to have strong faith and was in all of the important battles in Islam. One time during the Battle of Uhud, she helped him by giving water to the soldiers and helped take care of the people who got hurt. When the Quraysh started the rumor that the Prophet died in the battle, many of the Muslim soldiers got scared and ran away. 
But Umm Ayman did not run away. Instead, she threw dust in the Quraysh's faces, took their swords, and ran into the battlefield. She even encouraged many of the other women to join her. The Quraysh saw her bravery and quickly shot her with an arrow. But later, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help, she got better. Even when the Prophet got older, he would visit Baraka or Umm Ayman's house. And after the Prophet died, Caliph Abu Bakr Adantala and Caliph Umar Adantala would also show her the same level of respect during their rule. Then, in the year of 644, when she was around 87 years old, Umm Ayman took her last breath. Even though Umm Ayman was a poor black Muslim woman from Abyssinia, because she took care of the Prophet her whole life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her and she had an extremely high status in the entire Muslim Ummah. She was a huge support for the Prophet and his family for the Ummah. She was the only person who saw the Prophet from the moment he was born and until his death. She cared and protected him and everyone else from the bottom of her heart and so all the good things came back to her, making her the most famous Muslim woman in the Islamic history. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her and grant her the most highest level of paradise. Ameen.